So I'm going to tell you like this, you guys, um, in Lucrest 2, for as long as you can, listen in, listen in. And this is the moment, like I don't ask a lot of times because I don't see the point in it. But this is when you want to ping because we are about to jump into a conversation with an emotional intelligence master. Of course, we're going to keep it conversational. So we're going to share some things, but you know the wisdom of sitting at the feet. You know what I mean? Sitting at the feet of someone who's going to pour into your cup, empty your cup. Clear your mind, clear your heart, and uh, prepare for this. I'm peeking at his bio. Does not have a whole lot of information in there. I guess it's kind of hard just to write, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great. Bilingual Spanish and English transformational speaker, and that is true. I help busy leaders live in fulfillment without sacrificing more time by living an intentional life. I I'm also a lyricist and a conscious music creator. And this is very, very true. His last piece that just dropped was Hot Fire. I love it. With that, I would love to introduce you to someone who means a lot to me. Jose Rodriguez. How are you, sir? Thank you for the introduction. Uh, good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. Oh, uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, and rising. Hey, Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. I, I know my uh, my up, my file's not that updated. I kind of been off of Clubhouse. Thank you for Malika for bringing me back. Um, wish I got to update my my profile. <laughs> Listen, what you put in there is is uh pointed enough. Like for folks who are paying attention, it don't always take a whole lot of words to get the. Well, it, it actually, uh, as as I move through life, the message refine. We we keep refining because we keep evolving. You know what I mean? That's what's up. So right now we're in a place where we're helping. So if anybody can relate to this, we're helping anxious, overwhelmed, creative entrepreneurs to gain clarity, peace of mind, to live on purpose now while achieving whatever they want to achieve. Um, the, obviously, the reason we say this is because I, I see a lot of people, a lot of my clients who are looking forward to achieving something, to feel some type of way, and they're missing that that feeling could be felt right now because we are we're already abundant we're already fulfilled we already have everything we need mm. so that that's where the transition came um i don't know if you have any specific questions about emotional intelligence or just kind of recap something. so what i would love to do um first like it's always important to me just to create that bond and connection i would like the folks to understand who you are a little bit to know a little bit more about you yeah. i was going to say hi to nate and opie too because i did not uh, have a second to say hello to them yet but i definitely want to stay on task gotcha so, uh, I'm, I'm a I'm a 39 year old that looks fairly young. Twelve, <laughs> you mean? Got it. Right. <laughs> I look pretty young, man. So I, I, at first I used to get upset about that. Now I get it's a blessing. So because of that, I get to go into schools and and talk to all kinds That's of ages. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I get to you know talk to any any human, man, from a young one just because I look young. Uh, and then to the old ones, they think I'm younger, but then I start speaking and they're like, okay, you're old, you're old soul. I'm like, nah, man, I'm 39. Oh, that's why. Okay, I get it. <laughs> so it's been an awesome journey. I'm, uh, I'm from Puerto Rico. 15, at 15, I came to the U.S. to pursue whatever my dream was, which was basketball. I come here because of my bad habits. I get into a lot of trouble. I lose five scholarships. I go into the next bit thing that I know how to do, which is sell drugs. After that, at 26, I get it together. I found Christ in my life. I become a youth pastor two years later. After a youth pastor for four years, I become an associate pastor. After that, something happens that I get kicked out the church. Me and my wife get kicked out. Um, and, I, and I realized it was a misunderstanding. That's all that was. It was a misunderstanding. By that time, I was studying holistic emotional intelligence with Dr. Wanda Bonnet in Orlando, um, DRW Life Skill Institute. And I learned about these um, eight areas that we need to work on. And I always said it in the church, there was something missing because since I was growing up, everybody kept telling me, look for the spiritual, you know, you need Christ, you need Christ, cool. I get Christ, but then I find that there's problems in the individual health, in the emotional health, in the intellectual health, in the mental health. So I said, how do we work? How do we become the best version of ourselves in this earth while we're here? So... Holistic emotional intelligence basically tells me there's eight areas that we got to work in. Um, one is being individual health, which is knowing your life purpose. You know, what are your core values? Give me one second. I'm so sorry. And what I should have said, sure, you guys, my bad. You guys, grab your pens and papers. This is where you take notes. Go for it. Hota. Oh, and I need to slow down too, my body. I'm, I'm practicing to slowing down. I get excited for this stuff. Um, so number one is uh, individual health. 
you, you have to know your, your you should start working on even asking these questions. What is my life purpose? What are my core values? What do I believe in? What do I, how do I identify what my gifts and talents are? And, 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 and individual health will determine who I am. Um, the emotional health would, will, will let you know what your triggers are. What are things that are causing me to, to, to like my last song that I just dropped is called Loose Control. Not that you lose control, but that we all have control is just loose. And we have to tighten it every day because anything or anyone will, we say we have control, but then we'll, we'll catch ourselves, you know, cussing a storm or fighting with, with the guy who cut us off or, or the person who did this. So you really don't have control unless you're, you're intentionally checking on yourself. So that's the emotional health. It, it, it'll determine how I feel um, and what are my attachments and, and, and how to manage my, my, my memories. Um, number three is intellectual health. Intellectual health basically is, is, is what I know. Um, some people know what they know. I know what I know. I know what I don't know. And I don't know what I don't know. Most people, you know, you hear somebody say, yeah, I know it. You know, they, they just, they're close minded. They're not open for anything. So it's impossible for let source God to just show you, show you a way when you're stuck in your own ways and you're stuck there. Yeah, I got this. I know how I'm doing this. Look, nobody knows how to do anything. We can learn everything. So even if you think you know something, there's still room to, of improvement to learn. Um, obviously, those three create this one big harmony, which I call mental health. Um, you know, when, once you have these top three done, that gives you harmony and alignment for your next one, which is mental health, which is defining clarity and stability and awareness. Uh, so, so this is where I understand comes in. Oh, I get it. Oh, I understand I'm wasting time. Oh, I understand I'm in my head. I'm depressed. That means I'm in my past. Oh, wait, I, I, I have anxiety. That means I'm in my future. Peace is only found in the present moment. This is where um, mental awareness is so is so uh, it's so key, man. Because most people, again, even if it, I, I I see so many believers who believe in God and everything, but they just it's impossible for them to walk it to to understand what it means to renew their mind, to understand what it is to to really have a peace that surpasses our understanding. Because they think they they are they, that they are their thoughts. We're not our thoughts. We are the create. Uh, we're not the creators of our thoughts. We just watch them. You get to pick a thought and you're going to make a story from that thought. Most of the time, the story is a negative story, which is an illusion. That was my first song. Everything we're living is an illusion. If you're going to give yourself the ability to think something negative, well, give yourself the ability to think something positive. Either way, they're both illusions, but it's the last energy that's in your system. So because the last energy in your system is something good, your body, your mind is going to do whatever it needs to do to match that energy. So it's almost like if you bought a, a, a blue Honda, I don't know if it was happened to you, you bought a car, you never seen the car, you bought a new Honda, and now when you go on the road, you see blue Hondas everywhere. Have that happened to you before? Yes, sir. It's like, man, I just bought the car, now everybody has this car. So the car has always been there. It's just you wouldn't aware of it almost like if you're home alone and you hear a little noise and you kind of panic you know and now you hear a bunch of little noises you know like, man who's there and, and you're scared and those noises have always been there you just, you just never paid attention to them you haven't been aware of them so that's kind of the concept of mental of mental uh, awareness and then you got the physical health um, obviously we have 11 system or bi um, biologically system that, that we have which is um yeah man it's your whole system man that's why we that's why we drink water how we drink i haven't drink soda in nine years you know that's why that, that's why we meditate that's why we pray that's why we do certain mo modalities to keep our physical health right um then you got number six which is our social and i feel like a lot of people are, are really slacking in the social which is family friends intimacy work community environment is how you interact with other people I have a challenge coming out um, soon, a seven-day detox your mind and get rid of anxiety. And by day number two, it's just a smile. Even a, a fake smile will make your body feel eventually like if it's a real one. 
But here's the thing, Malika. Who who would you approach? Somebody who has a face put on. You don't know what they're going through. But if you see two people and one is smiling and the other one is just frowning, mm-hmm. who would be more approachable? Mm-hmm. Very true, bro. Right. So something as simple as that and you intentionally just practicing just to smile. Smile at anyone that comes up to you. You know, one thing um, uh, a client of mine was re- uh, had a realization the other day. And he says... Bro, you know what? Everybody is cool. Like, everybody's a cool person, man. It's just that as soon as you meet somebody, you're not meeting them. You're meeting their ego. So everybody's walking around with their ego, and they kind of like, you know, fronting, like, no, I'm better, I'm, you're better, or oh, I'm doing this, and I'm doing this. But when you when somebody cracks that with a smile and says, hey, how you doing, man? Hey, by the way, I like what you're doing. Now that ego left, and the real person, show, the little kid shows up and says, oh, man, thank you. Uh, yeah, man, that's what's right. I appreciate you. And and this whole new person, and, and I see this with very successful people, man. I was just with a guy this weekend, man, who, who again, this is, might be not normal for people, but this guy rented a house, $10 million house for five days, just to vacation, him, his family. He had his assistant there. Now, we came in with a production team. We did some video documentation for him. And, and just asking this guy a question, man, um, I said, man, people, people, most people want this from an egoistic place, which is where he was at. And now he's shifting to fulfillment, which is bringing his assistant, bringing his, bringing his, his father in and letting them experience this thing. Or bringing my production team to let, them, to let my guys and myself experience this and just show that it's possible without the ego. Meaning you could have, you could have all these desires in your heart and all these dreams to become very wealthy, and this is a parenthesis, by the way, to become very wealthy, but it's from an ego place. So now if you come, if you detach from this stuff and you're able to find yourself now and understand that you're abundant now, that you don't lack anything, that you have everything, that everything in your life has happened for a purpose and a reason, it hasn't happened to you, it happened for you. Now from a place of abundance, when you wake up in the morning, what can you create if there's nothing wrong and you're not missing anything and you don't need to go out there and make it happen because there's nothing to make happen? What if you just wake up and you just create? Ooh. And you just wake up and say, man, what can I do today? Who am I going to impact today? What am I going to learn today? And because you're asking those questions, God is going to align those things. And all you need to do is stay clear from the illusions. Don't lose control. So you can stay connected and hear what's the next step. And I promise you, man, there's some beautiful things being revealed because you're listening. And you're so paying now attention. I'm going to hop in and offer some pushback. You have dropped. Bah, 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 bah. I'm over here taking notes and trying to pop onto the stage and all this other part, part, part. But let me push you back a little bit on what you literally just shared. Sure. We are already abundant. We already have what we need, right? Yes. Um, dodging the illusion and resting in who God is and trusting, right? We've had that conversation a couple of times uh, this week already about trust and belief and faith. For someone who is sitting going, I hear, dude, but I don't see it. Give me the house, um, Jose. I, I, Share I, the house. I'll give you the first one. Um, um, one of my, my biggest ahas this year was, oh, last year, no, I'm for sure. Um, what's wrong? I used to ask, and the person who's asking that question is probably saying, man, what is wrong? I keep messing up, you know, I can't get it together. The next thing that came out in my text as I'm writing this, I said, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? The only thing that's wrong with you is your own resistance to this moment. The only thing that's wrong with you is that you believe that something is wrong with you. The only thing that's wrong with you is that you think that anything or that all should be different. What in you has in the illusion that something is wrong? You get to pretend that something is wrong with you. But the truth is, the reality is that right now, as you listen to me, there's nothing wrong. Like, you guys are sitting, or I don't know what you guys are doing, but you guys are listening to this. If you examine your body right now, you'll notice that nothing hurts. You'll notice that even if you have a cough, like, you are alive. There's nothing wrong. It's just a thought. So how do I get present, which is the key to this thing? You just breathe. It's one of my first ones. Breathing makes you understand what is real. Like You're breathing. 
That means you're alive. That means that's a fact. That's a fact. Everything else is in your head. Everything else is a thought. So when I realize this thought that, oh, man, this is in my head, it's almost like one of my verses says, I stopped living my life, making up stories. They had me feeling lonely, were worried, missing the glory. I did an inventory of my thoughts and categories that were holding me back. Now I realized they were working for me. See, once I accepted the present, I feel like I opened a present. With any thought that would come up, whether good or bad, I feel I'm bringing my essence. I stay connected to presence. I stay walking in acceptance. I stay looking out for hitting opportunities that could turn into a blessing. Ego, you can have that fear, but it stay back. Illusion of money, we pass that. Living in fulfillment, we got that. From negativity, we stay back. Even if it finds us, we lay back. Being in the present is a life hack to remove our illusions and fight back. Is it, could that be a how to, Maliga? Uh, I'm gonna have to raise my hand and just say uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fire literally. That's what to be all. continued at the poetry room, I think. Like, yeah. Well, you know, and I guess he didn't say this sort of out loud, but he is saying that he does have music out, right? But he is one of the coldest rappers you are ever gonna come across. And the fact that uh, I love the lyrics that you shared, very conscious lyrics. So y'all know how it is. You put on some music and every other no. five, and I like the F word, but every other five words is F. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> the music is clean. And that's a good one. That's a good with the music, by the way, guys. If you go to your real life.com with one R one L, your real life.com with one R one L, you'll find some of the music, the podcast with my producer. We, we I think we're in episode five right now. You're not. Uh, a lot of is things it, that is I R E A L, right? Your real life.com. Your your real life mm-hmm. and Y O U R E A L I F E. Only one so, R. One R and your one R one L. Got it. I did that on purpose for. I say if you get it, it's for you. If you don't, don't worry about it. It's, that's why I tell people all the time. www. Right? <laughs> yeah, www. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is your real life. dot com. We want our one. Just pin it up top, you guys. There we go. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, and we tweaking it. You know, we coming out. I got a few clients coming up now. We are building a coaching system in there, an ecosystem in there, a community in there, of like minded people who just creative entrepreneurs. Man, we just we just go in base of thoughts. Um, like a thought here, here. I would say this is a three hundred thousand dollar bag, and I just want to share this with you because it's just an idea, and you guys have it. It's, you know, we call it intuition, your gut feeling. It's just because we get overwhelmed with um with these illusions, uh, we almost get scared of the work that we think it might take, and it really doesn't. It's just a thought. Um, I got a church who's doing a big event, a uh, concert. They come up, they hit me up for production. Okay, cool. I got a production team now as well. That's another business that we're building. And um, and, and I say, bro, this lady, who is this lady? I'm like, look, what if, what if they do? It? They were thinking of changing the place to another to another location because they might sell out. 250 people fit here, and they might sell out. I say, bro, why don't you just do a live event? Huh? What do you mean? Like, yeah, whoever can make it, just have them at least watch it live. You have the full production already. Like, you already. Go live every Sunday on YouTube. We just got to do a private link, put a little $10 bag on it. A thousand people is 10,000. When I look at the lady, the lady has 10 million people in her last music video, 1.4 in her last music video, 280 followers, 280,000 followers. I said, what will you, what will happen if a little small percentage, just 30,000 jump on the live for 10 bucks? That's an extra 300,000 not doing anything different. Just hitting live. So that was just an idea. And that idea is now, you know, we just built the system online to create the, the, the funnel and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, just doing exactly the same thing that they're doing. So, again, things are happening already that you're just not being intentional and you're not capitalizing on because you're just playing with these illusions in your head. When so there's let me nothing pop you on. back a little bit, too, because I'm... When I say um, somebody texts me drinking from a fire hose, <laughs> and I understand that, so allow me to do two things. One, I will offer you this. I My heart is to let him share as much as possible. The replays are on. If it's that you heard something and it, it kind of rocked your mind a little bit and you're running to keep up, that's fine because you can always go back and listen to the replay and work through your, thro- your thoughts, suspend your thinking for now, and accept, you know, receive and then go back, hit those replays, and you'll be able to catch 
a little bit more, maybe iron out a couple of your thoughts. Hold on, I wanted to ask you, I'm backing you up to, uh, I think it was like three, intellectual health. I know what I know, what I don't know, and I don't know what I don't know. Yeah. Um, those three creating the mental health, defining the clarity, ability, the pressure in the past, anxiety in the future. I understand that, like dealing with my clients and then even myself at times, when you mention the depression, your mind is stuck in the past. Anxiety, your mind is to the future. I am all about those tips and those tools and those tricks that help us to remove the excuses. Because that's literally at the end of the day what it's all about. Right. Moving the obstacles so that you can move forward freely. Yeah. I would ask you, would you lay in that for a couple of minutes? The the depressed in the past and the anxiety in the future. Help us gotcha. out. Um, gotcha. But, um, we we all have we all have this little kid inside of us, this little Malikia, this little Hota, right? Who's been through some stuff. Um, you know, we just been through some stuff, which builds these patterns, these ego, these character, whatever you want to call it, and it makes you be who you are today. But who you are today, unless you, 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 you I call it woke, unless you're aware, you, you're not really who you are today. You're, you're just a bunch of patterns, you're a bunch of baggages. So the more, right, let me let me see how I can say this. We're a bunch of baggages. A bunch of baggages that want to be understood. As humans, we want to be understood. One of the things, that, the number one thing that holds ourselves back is our illusions, right? There's a, there's a great verse that says, um, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, so you may know what God's good, pleasing, and acceptable will is for your life. Right? Knowing this, how do you renew your mind? Is the question. That's been my question for years. How do you renew your mind? I'm pretty sure that the person who is going through these episodes, depression, anger, frustration, whatever, whatever, there's there's something that is avoiding you from finding you, and that is you. What are you doing with your time? What are you doing? What are you doing? What was your morning like? What is your afternoon like? So I have an alarm that causes me to every hour to be intentional, energetic, and grateful. Intentional, energetic, and grateful. Every hour I get this alarm, and it's for the next hour. When it sounds, it makes me breathe. Number one, number two, it makes me stop doing what I'm doing. It's almost like a, like a like a check in. It makes me it makes me say, doing something unimportant and well doesn't make it more important. So then I look at my next hour. I say, okay, what's next? What am I getting into now? How can I be intentional? Fulfillment, fulfillment, which is what we all look for, what we look for in cars, in the next girl, in the next business venture what are we looking for we're looking for fulfillment fulfillment is only found when you understand what your natural born gifts and abilities are and how you use that to serve other people the reason i bring this up is because it takes intentionality it, it this there, we, we we keep playing defense when i feel some way i'm going to do something about it where that's defense you shouldn't do something about it or try to fix something when something is showing up. Man, I hate to just remix this right now. Just this just is coming in right now. This is coming in. Hold on, let me let me let me fix my thoughts on this. When when something hurts, there's either there's there's two worlds. Either I'm gonna completely stop this, ignore this, or, or I'm gonna do something about it. Right? There's these two north and south i'm gonna come do something about it or i'm not gonna do nothing about it um and there's a gray area that most people are missing and they're not giving themselves just a chance to sit just to sit like you don't have to do anything about anything like if if you feel like something is bothering you it, it, like a thought comes up you're like man this thing hurts this is painful if you close your eyes and it still hurts and it's painful you open your eyes again, and it still hurt. It's painful. It doesn't have anything to do with you, because I guarantee that the thing, you, the thing that you're suffering about, is not in front of you. You're not even seeing it. 
I, I, I go I go back to it's in your head. Like man, if if we could understand it today, I understood that healing doesn't take time; it takes awareness. It's just hearing one thing. So so if I could say anything, that man, when when you feel like something is wrong, it's just it wants to come out and leave. When you get busy trying to do something about it or trying to distract yourself about it, that's you pushing it back down. That's you pushing that little kid back down who wants to show up again. So Malika, what will you do if your little girl shows up and is hurting? Do you do you say, Oh, I gotta get busy to distract her? I gotta no, you will probably embrace her. Right? You probably give her a hug and love on her. Mm-hmm. So when this pain shows up, it's not for you to do anything. Just don't do nothing. Like just stop. Let the thought come up. Breathe. Sit with it. And as you see it show up, it might hurt a little bit cool. But when you become present, all it's gonna do is leave. And if you really become present and just be quiet and don't do nothing about it, like be still, it'll reveal to you why it's showing up. And you'll see, oh man, I remember when I was a little kid this thing happened to me so to avoid feeling this feeling now i'm this person and now this person today in 2022 triggered me to this pain for this pain to show up for me to see it for the revelation of when it happened to be revealed so i could let go of that thing that you know that famous let go and let god so i could like literally i let go of this thought because it's just a thought it already happened it's a fact the other day, uh, uh, I got a uh, eight, uh, $1,800 camera. I'm shooting, you know, that's one of my cameras, and, and, and it dropped on a jacuzzi. It blew. The dude says, hey, the camera dropped. Everybody, oh, your camera dropped. I'm like, oh, snap. I pick it up. I put it back up. And here's a fact. The fact is the camera dropped in the water. That's a fact. Is it going to work? I don't know. But it's a fact. Now, what good does it take for me to get upset about this? This is, this is, it's not good. There's nothing, it, it, it's irrelevant. Mm. So instead of me getting upset about it, it just happened. I pick up the camera, I put it up, I dry it up, take the batteries off, take the SIM card out, the SD card, um, and, I, and I just leave it dry. That's all I could do. In the meanwhile, proceed. Like, okay, the camera's done. What am I going to do? I got a backup camera. Okay, we're good. There's nothing wrong. This, the day after, somebody gifted me another camera. Hey, come on. No, no, listen, somebody gifted me the same camera as my older camera which now that turned god this is how, how the blessing works now that turned into now i have two cameras equal quality i just got to get an external battery now and because of that two days later i get a, a call from a uh, 250 people conference an eight hour conference they want me to the production team to come in and, and and you know record it do some behind the scenes do some um, recap and uh, some pictures so I got the team going. Now, because I got an extra camera, exactly the same one as the older one that I have, I could use both of these cameras to live stream. So what I did, hey, do you want to make some more money for your event? He's like, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you got 250 people coming. What about the people that are out of state, out of the country? How can we give them access? And, and I pitched them the live stream that I'm doing now. And and so now to, today we ha- we're going to have a meeting to you know finalize the details on the prices for the production and the live stream. Which I'm gonna give him for free because I'm already there. I'm gonna give you the live stream for free. We're gonna cut a deal on how much the ticket is gonna be, and you're gonna give me a percentage from this price, and I'm gonna give you the next percentage. So now I'm making these people money because I dropped my camera, and I wasn't thinking about live stream mm-hmm. until I got the second camera because there's nothing wrong. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there's nothing wrong. Everything happens for you. So when you mm-hmm. get it, that is some of the best testimonies. Think, think about that. Your story, your mess becomes a message. We heard that before, but we don't believe that it's our mess can become a message. Mm. But whatever it is you're going through right now, whatever it is, that mess, you went through that because you could. And, and, and you, if anyone could go through that, it was you. Why? Because there's people that will only hear your voice. And the only way that they'll become aware and healed and hopeful is with your story. With you finally saying, oh man, this is something that happened to me. It's a fact. What? No, no, what? Who do I want to be now? 
not later, not when I accomplish this. Who do I want to be right now? I love it. I'm very, very grateful for this conversation and this time. You have been uh, pouring, pouring, pouring out, and I am scooping, scooping, scooping. I'm getting messages in the background, so the conversation is good. You guys, I want to pause for a second and just ask, did anybody have a question uh, that was just kind of sitting with them that they want to share? Uh, I do, if I, if I can jump mm-hmm, in there. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Maliki, and thank you for inviting Jose. Jose, thank you for sharing with us. Um, I normally would say we've been scooping up. Right now, I think there are quite a few people looking for lifeguards. Um, <laughs> so my question to you would be this. A large part, especially the last portion of what you've been sharing, sounds a lot like um, the power of perspective. How you choose to see something is how you will respond to it. Uh, which is a very um, uh, foundational precept in my life. My question to you would be this. One of the um, issues with having the ability to have perspective in given situations, there comes a degree of having to um, uh, uh, bend further than where you are, being able to see more than your surroundings to know that there's more options to look at. So... For someone who doesn't, you know, doesn't have that perspective, how would you um, recommend for them to attain that? If all they've known is pain, or if all they've known is addiction, or if all they have known yeah. um, is the strife that they have been dealing with, how do they gain the perspective that there is more to their life than the struggle that they have been going in? Yeah, great question, man. Um... Uh, it, 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 it has to be, us. this is where intentional living comes in, man. It has to be something that you want and because you want it, then you make a conscious decision to learn this. Now there's plenty of resources, YouTube, books, audios, this, this, this audio right here, you know, just connecting here. There's plenty of resources. So now once you grab a one, Obviously, you are, we are creatures of habits. So it's not that we stop doing our old habits. It's that we replace them with new habits. Um, so, again, you might not know what you don't know, but you cannot be ignorant to what you hear. So if you heard it once and it's set in, it's your duty to do the due diligence to start seeking. If you seek, you shall find. Now, mind you, I have met people who they just don't want it. As weird as it sounds, man. And, and you know what? It's not even that they don't want it. What I understood now is that everybody has a season. And and it might, they might not have learned yet what they need to learn yet. So they have to go through their cycle until they, not somebody teaches them, but until they learn it. Because once they learn it, it becomes their mission. Now the shift happens. You cannot, you know, we heard the saying, you cannot bring a horse to drink water or something like that. Like You can't make somebody do something, but you can model it and become that sample for somebody else. Now, as an individual who wants it, if you want it, I will go back to how do you renew your mind? So your mind works with, with what you would see and what you listen, those two things, what you see and listen. So knowing that now, and you're listening to this now, you know that now. I would say, what are you listening to? And what, are you, what are you seeing? Because if you become intentional with what you put in your mind, your thoughts will become your words. Your words will become your action. Your action will become your habits. Your habits will become your character. And your character becomes your destiny. But it all starts with your thought process. So perspective is a thought process. I choose to look at something how I choose to look at. It. Now, mind you, there is no good or bad. This is just experiences. There's nothing bad happening. My camera dropped. That, that, that's, not, that's not bad. For, for the normal eye, for the Nick, for the millionaire who's in front of me, it might seem like, a man, I'll be mad right now. The next day, you know, he tells me, he's like, man, thank you for, for yesterday, bro, because you really showed me that I need, I, I thought I got it together. I'm pretty good. I, I, I used to be very short, you know, like, I used to explode quick. And something like the camera would have really threw me off my game. But the way I saw you model that yesterday I realized that I need to work on my, uh, I need to work on me, man. I need to work on me more. Like the way you, so, so you see what I'm saying? Like all I did was model it. 
and it gave him perspective. Now that he had the aha, he starts to work on it. You know what I'm saying? I definitely do, and I thank you for that answer. I didn't, I didn't know if anybody else had a question. Um, I might have a follow up, but uh, I'll let it swing back around if 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 that's the case. So I would say if you have a follow up question that's kind of in the same vein of what you just asked, go ahead and ask your question. Um. It's a, it's a little bit more further down the road, Malika. It's more towards something specific that um, Jose said. Jose, you, you said there's nothing good or bad. And I wanted you to elaborate on that a little bit more in the sense of this. Um, I've heard that before, and I know that, can, that saying, without a little bit more fleshing out, can come across either a little, if not cavalier, uh, possibly even tone deaf to those who have experienced trauma, those who have experienced certain instances in their life that by any other reasonable definition would be considered bad. How within the paradigm of what you're saying does that fit? Gotcha. Um, There is, there's another great verse that says, all things work together for those who love God and are called according to His purpose. <laughs> Meaning, well heard. That Jay, you adjust have... your mic. Something pop. Something happened. Uh, one second. Mm. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but it sounds like you're in a in a glass. It's not. Uh, I'm not sure. uh, can you hear me? Can it still sound like that? Can you? Yeah, it still sounds like that, but I can make out your words. Can you guys make out his words? Scott, can you hear him well yeah. enough? Yeah, I can make out his words, okay, but you're right. It sounds like he's in a glass. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but it sounds like you're in a glass, but go ahead. Uh, well, um, you, everybody here has been through stuff previously, and you have seen how it's magically it'll always work out. Magically, it always worked out without you even pushing. You try to push, and you try to figure it out, but then magically it always worked out. That magic, we all have it inside of us. That God, we all have it inside of us. Now, the only thing that stops that magic from happening is you. We have certain attachments to things and people, so when we lose something, when, we, when something left our life unexpectedly, because we didn't plan it out. If I was to, if I was to sell my camera, hey, I'm selling my camera, and I sell it, and I got rid of the eighteen hundred dollars, then I plan to get rid of that attachment. But because I dumped it, in, it you know, it fell in the water, and now I have, I lost per se eighteen. So I lost it, and I wasn't prepared to because it wasn't something that I did. It could be something wrong, but when I understand that I have a magic wallet per se that everything happens for a reason, I detach from 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 the thing, whether it's a thing, a person, I detach from the outcome, and I'm open to the magical experience that is available. That's when the extraordinary becomes ordinary. So what I would tell, I mean, if you really look at your life and you really, really, really look back, you will realize that you have been through a bunch of things already. It's not the first time you go through this stuff. You've been through a bunch of things already, a bunch of traumatic things that happened, and you're still here. That means that you still overcame. That means that there's still purpose in your life. That means that there's still the the what you were what you were created to do is still in the works. And you're just living the journey. People want the glory, but they 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 discredit the story, man. Like you're just going through the journey. That's all it is. So the faster you get to hone that, man, I am going places. I am meant to do something with my life. Everything that I've been through has served me for greater. And this is where fulfillment comes in. If you were to realize that whatever you're going through today and you were to be okay with it, and you start to share your experience and how you found peace in the midst of this because you became aware. I, 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 I almost guarantee that either the next people that you're going to be talking to, it, it's almost like 
God put them in your path for you to share this. And you're going to realize that what you're going through, it wasn't even for you. It was actually for them. For them to get hope from you and your story. That's where the mess becomes your message. Does that make sense? It does, sir. And I thank you for your answer. Hmm. I'm enjoying the conversation. I'm enjoying it. My love, Malik, I would hate to cut this off, man. I actually yeah. got to got to get to run okay <laughs> um I, it was a 9 15 appointment but i, I told him I'm, cool. <laughs> I'm on the way <laughs> Yo, this, is, this, this is more important than the barbershop it's Yo, all good but... i appreciate you so much being here let me just say thank you thank you thank you this is on the replays i'm so glad they were on and Hota, how about the reason i had to send you the second link was i oopsed and uh made the room disappear <laughs> This oh, morning, yo, and I had to put that bad boy back together like really, really fast, like two minutes, two seconds, just to make sure we were here yes. to carry this conversation. And I started to snap. I literally started to snap. I was like, ah, there's no point, and I don't have the energy for it. So I appreciate, there you go. I appreciate there you the go. truth wherever I find it. Thank you so much, and God bless your day, sir. I, I, I appreciate you guys, and uh, and thank you for putting me back on. I got clubhouse again, so I'll be in two a little more often now. Listen, I'm gonna need a, a part two on this a uh, little later, a little later. We'll get it. We'll get it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, guys. God bless you guys. Hey, make sure you stay tuned, man. Again, yourreallife.com. And let's, let's keep keep living your best version, man. And we didn't even speak about uh, in magic, so you definitely got to roll back. <laughs> I got you. All right, fam. All right, fam. Be blessed. Bye. You too. That was amazing. Yes, absolutely. Ooh. So, so good. Let's run back. Go wow. ahead. Denise, you said that was amazing. I'm listening. What was amazing about it for you? Well, I think just um, having that validation sometimes or, or re rehearing someone say that maybe that your mess is a message. And, and it's not, it may not come across when you're in that mess, but telling that mess maybe to someone else might be what they need to uh, to get through theirs or, or to be a light to them. So, mm -hmm. and I, I see that red bar. I really do think it's all about perspective, which was most of us. How do you perceive that threat? Do you, do you perceive it as a problem or an opportunity? Mm -hmm. um, so that was, that was really worth hearing. And how about you, Lucrez? Because I saw your mic open and then Eva. I absolutely love what um, Jose had to share simply because um, it was just a, uh, I guess I would say a confirmation of how I've lived my life. I became self-aware years ago and I saw no point in getting upset and angry about many things that happen in life. It, it has to be something devastating like death, but even in death, with, and I've had family members who have passed away, um, I still find joy within me, um, even though it, it, that's like the worst case scenario. Um, I still find life to be funny and people to be, to be um, enjoyable, even in those instances, because death, for example, death brings people together who haven't seen each other for years. So it's all working for the good, right, of those who love the Lord, who are the called according to his purpose. But it really all is, it really, all of it is working together. So I completely um, agree with Jose 100%, 110%. And I, I also appreciated the fact that he said, we're not the creators of our thoughts, we're the watchers of our thoughts. And I really had to pause on that. Um, because when, when I coach my clients, I tell them, when you're having a thought, you need to catch it, you need to check it. And if it's not good and it's not serving you, you need to change it. Um, and so mm, say that again, say that again. catch it, check it. And if it's not doing you any good, change it. You have the power to change it. And you can replace it with a better thought. Like you just can't tell somebody, get rid of that bad thought and not and leave it void. It needs to be filled with another thought. Um, but if you don't have an arsenal of good thoughts, 
<laughs> you don't have a bank of good thoughts and you don't have the habit of, of, of focusing on the good things that have happened and the good that is happening, um, then you're not going to know how to fill that void when you cast down that bad thought. So um, I, everything that he said was really resonating with me, and I'm certainly going to get the replays on this. So that's, that's my two cents. I love what you shared, and it kind of like sparked off a thought. You mentioned those who do not have an arsenal of good thoughts to replace it, and I kind of even think in his conversation he touched that too. What are you focused on? What is your perspective? What are you reading? What are you seeing? What are you listening to? Because a lot of the times it boils down to that. I love that he pointed out about um, the thoughts coming as well. Because if you look at the word, I know the thoughts I think toward you. So you know thoughts are being thought toward you all day on day long. And you can generally flesh out the positive or negative energy attached, right? So how he also mentioned about choosing your thought. I swear when I was listening to him, it was like I was hearing my grandmother hit me up with the comments, thoughts or things and words materialize. And and that is, um, this has been a good conversation. Eba, I wanted to yield the mic to you because uh, you said it was amazing for you too. I caught the tail end of it. Um, but, and then we had the little difficulty with hearing his voice. But the thing that was really, really, it just really spoke to me and man, it's like, it was, that was very, very profound. If he said, detach yourself from, from everything and the outcome, everything, things. And like he did with the camera, that was a beautiful example. And that, that just really spoke to me. I needed to hear that right now, this moment, I needed that reminder. <laughs> so thanks for having him on and inviting me. Yeah, absolutely. This is a conversation. I, like, um, like I said, it's not often where you're going to hear me doing a whole lot. You need to ping, you need to ping. But this is, uh, um, as I mentioned yesterday or the day before, whichever day it was, who cares? At the beginning of the year, if you have not started your year in October, for a lot of us um, who are in business, entrepreneurs, we begin our year in October. But for those who really push it to January and you are just kicking off how you're going to form your year, mindset mindset heart set heart set life that's the math for me that's my life math so january i figure hell you left me at the helm that's what we about to do we're going to work on our mindset and our emotions so that we continue to remove the excuses and have an amazing year period so that that's the mission did anyone else um have some takeaways that they wanted to share from the conversation Hi, Shao, by the way. Hey, hey now, family. And good morning to you. Hey, how you gonna slide in here and, and stay in the audience? Do, 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 do not do that to me. <laughs> I saw the message in the back. I was like, Shao up in here? Man, I need family, to family. run to the kitchen and get uh, That was beautiful. It was it was poetic, almost cinematic, the way that he was, he was speaking. It's beautiful. <laughs> He's a... Um, some folks you just want to sit across from, right? You just want to sit down across and, and chop it up and let your mind flow. And it's mm -hmm. um, some folks you get in front of and it's just a conversation, you exact business, and you keep it moving. But then there are your thinkers, your visionaries. Mm -hmm. And again, he is younger than I am. Big freaking rock deal because I know to sit at the feet and listen. Mm -hmm. Yes, some of it is a reminder, sure. As my grandmother been in my behind since I was a kid. However, I still need the reminders. And then some of it, yo, when he said, hold up, let me pull out my nose. I was sitting here like, whoa. Mm -hmm. Thoughts, words, actions, character, destiny. And then there was one other thing he said that I put stars on because I was losing my mind. Like, this is exactly it. Healing doesn't take time. It takes awareness wow yes. that there Malik, yeah. i said that mm -hmm. yes yep. i put that it's not not a beautiful that that's the summation like i've had so when my girl was going through the stuff with um her ex dude that was trying to like remove her life right we had a conversation and in the moment like we had two conversations and one conversation i hit it with the i don't know like what do i do dude i don't know another conversation we had i was like listen you have the choice you have the choice on how long this is going to take how long do you want to be depressed? How long do you want to be in bed, not showered or, or living that, that damage on repeat? 
Mm-hmm. We got a choice in this mess. Mm-hmm. Yes, things that happen may suck, 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 suck. However, do I really want to give the energy that I have been allotted for this day to that bullshit? I pretty much don't. I'm not a fan of of losing my time on foolishness. I'm really just not. So mm-hmm. it's important. I love that line. That was that to me. I wrote that down. We're gonna listen. The brand and I are gonna sit back and have a whole conversation on it. 